Hello, my name is Kevin, and through my YouTube channel, I've helped thousands of people fix their controllers. Now it's time to tackle the PS5 DualSense. If you're having problems with the analog stick on yours, I'm going to show you 9 methods that may help. Each method gets progressively more difficult, so start at the beginning and work your way through them until your controller is fixed or until you've reached the end of your comfort level. Method 1 is a long shot, but Sony does recommend it if you're having an issue. Press the PlayStation button on the controller. This will bring up a menu, and on that menu, choose Accessories, then choose Wireless Controller, then choose Controller Settings. There's an option called Wireless Controller Device Software. Look at that option and see if there's an update available. It'll say it off to the side there. If there is one, go ahead and run it. It'll prompt you to get a USB cable and connect your controller to the system. Method 2 is another long shot, but once again Sony recommends it. There's a little pinhole on the back of the controller. It's a reset button. Find something small like a paper clip or a needle and press it in there and hold it for 5 seconds. This is going to cause the controller to forget it was ever hooked up to your PS5. So afterward, you'll need to reconnect it with the USB cable to the PS5. Method 3 involves tweaking the in-game settings for whatever game you're playing. Not every game is going to have these options. Go into the controller settings and see if there's an option to increase the dead zone. That may help resolve your drift-related issues. You may find other settings that may help you as well. For example, if you're having trouble with sprinting, like when you're sprinting and then all of a sudden you stop, you may have an option to turn on auto run, or you might be able to map the sprinting to a different button. Sometimes analog issues are caused by debris that's gotten underneath the thumbsticks. So by cleaning underneath the thumbsticks, it may help resolve the issue. One way to do that is to blow air into it. You can take a straw and bend the end of it and then blow into the opening underneath the analog stick. Make sure as you do this, you're pushing the analog stick in the opposite direction. You gotta keep in mind that the analog stick looks like this. So to be effective, you have to get the air past the plastic covering some people skip the straw and just blow with their mouth. If you do that, just make sure you don't breathe in as you got your mouth up against it. You don't want to inhale whatever's in there. You can also use canned air, but it's a little hard to get the nozzle down in there. If you happen to have a dust blower, that works as well. It's basically a high-powered hairdryer. And if you happen to have a hairdryer, you can use it as well. Just make sure it's the cold setting. This method is the opposite of the last method. Instead of blowing, you're going to vacuum it out with a vacuum cleaner. I advise that you don't use full suction power. If you have a ring adjuster like this, you can decrease the suction. Method 6 also involves cleaning, but instead we're going to go deeper inside the controller and do it from there. Disclaimer, taking apart your controller has some risk. You could break something. I'm going to try to give you as much detail as possible to keep that from happening, but no matter how much detail I give, the risk will never be zero. You'll want to start by taking this black plate off. You'll need something to pry it off with, and that could be a flathead screwdriver. You can use something like this. You can also use a butter knife. You can also use a prying tool like this. It's from a repair kit I got off Amazon. It's a good kit if you repair a lot of controllers. If you don't, this might be a little bit of overkill. I'll leave a link in the description. You'll start with the handles and just pry the plate off from there. Note, if you're using the butter knife, don't use the whole blade. Just use the end of it like this. Once you got them unsnapped from the handles, you can start working your way up toward the middle of the controller like this. To remove it, you'll want to pry it up at an angle like this. Now there is an option for you right here. You can remove these rings that are underneath the analog sticks and then you can clean from there with your air or your vacuuming or whatever you did in the previous steps. You got a little bit better access by removing those rings and they do snap back into place afterward, but I'm gonna continue on taking you deeper inside your controller where the cleaning is gonna be more effective. 
Next, you'll need to remove the R1 and L1 triggers. Each one has two hinges to it, one on the left side of the button and one on the right side of the button. So what you need to do is pry the left side and the right side. And just a warning, the button will go flying pretty far. Next, you need to do some unscrewing. You'll need a Phillips screwdriver. If you're looking for the exact size, you can use any of the sizes that are on the screen right there. There's one screw at the end of each handle, so take that one out. If the screw is being stubborn and won't turn, put a drop of water on it and let it soak, and also tap the screw. There's also a screw underneath each of the trigger buttons that you removed, so take out both of those. Now you'll have to separate the shell into two halves. Start with the sides. Stick your tool in there and just pry it so it starts to come apart. Then go to these two hinges in the middle of the controller and pry those loose. A flathead screwdriver works best here. Then go back out to the sides and continue prying. It's gonna feel very tight, but keep trying and be patient. If one of the hinges inside breaks or something, it's usually not a big deal. With the screws, you should be able to get the controller back together. With everything completely loose, you should be able to push on the trigger buttons and push the upper casing away from the lower casing. At this point in the process, I recommend you take a photo. And keep on taking photos throughout the process as you disassemble it more. Tip the battery up to reveal another screw and remove that one. Underneath the battery compartment is a microphone. You'll need to slide it out of the slot. There's a little piece of ribbon on the right of it. If you push on that, it'll slide out. Just leave it hanging. You can now remove the battery compartment. This is a good time to take another photo. Next, you'll need to remove the ribbon cables that are connected to the board. There's four of them on my version. You may have a different revision of your board with different ribbon cables, perhaps in different spots. So make sure you're checking all the way around the board. On mine, I just pulled each one out with my fingers. If you want to, you can disconnect the battery. You'll just have to pull it out of the connector. But there is a risk. It might be so tight that you pull the whole entire connector off the board. In that case, you're screwed. So I'm just gonna leave the battery connected throughout this whole cleaning. And I recommend you do the same. Push up on the analog sticks until the board comes out. And gently flip it over. Be very mindful of the wires that are still connected to it. There's a good chance that this speaker came out. If so, just lay it to the side and we'll deal with it later. You can now pull the tops off the analog sticks. And from here is where you can give these things a very good cleaning. You can use the blowing method or the vacuuming method or both if you wish. Bear in mind a lot of debris gets into these little doors. On mine the doors are orange, they could be a different color on yours. You'll want to make sure you get some air going in the sides of those. Another option at this point is to use contact cleaner if you have it. Don't use regular WD-40, just use something labeled as contact cleaner. You can also drop some isopropyl alcohol in there as well. Just make sure you let everything dry before reassembling. Now I'm gonna walk you through how to reassemble everything. If the speaker fell out of place, put it in this little slot that's in between the two holes where the analog sticks were. You'll wanna make sure these two metal contacts line up with the two metal contacts that are on the board. Put the analog caps back on and then flip the board back over. As you're doing this, you'll want to make sure you're not crushing the ribbon cables. Just bring them up so they're wrapped around the board. Then plug all the cables back in. On some of my ribbons, there's these two handles which I can use to push it in. Then put the battery holder back on and screw it in. Then take the microphone and reinsert it in that slot.
then put the battery back the way it was. On mine, the QR code was facing upward. There's a tiny little bracket that allows you to stuff the cords underneath it. Now we have to put the two halves back together. Make sure these motor wires are not hanging over the edge. If they are, you might clip them in half. Start by putting the trigger buttons through the holes, and then try to evenly snap both sides together at the top. This part's very hard, so just keep trying and be patient with it. Once the upper part is snapped together, you can then work your way down the sides. Make sure the two hinges here snap together. Then reinsert the four screws you took out earlier. You can then put the plate back on by tilting it at an angle like this and then pushing down. And then just make sure it snaps into place everywhere. Then snap the trigger buttons back on. Method 7 involves going back in again, but this time doing a very deep cleaning. So disassemble the controller again, as shown in method 6. For whichever analog stick that's causing the issue, we are going to open up these orange doors. Once again, on your controller, they may not actually be orange. Before we open the door though, I just want to point something out. Each one is snapped in with three pegs. There's two on one side and only one on the other. And there's also two hinges. Those pegs and hinges fit into the holes here. If you use too much force, you could tear off one of the legs or one of the hinges. So I'm going to be very detailed in how I describe things here. First we want to loosen the hinge by poking at it. Then take a flathead screwdriver and very carefully, without pushing down too far, pry it open. If you get it open and one of the pegs is bent, don't worry, when you put it back together just make sure you unbend the peg. Inside the door is a disc. You'll want to remove it. The best way is to pop it out with your fingernail, and then carefully pick it up and set it aside. You now have access to the contact strip that's inside the door. This contact gets dirty a lot, so what we're going to do is take a q-tip and dip it in isopropyl alcohol and then clean the contact. Make sure you're not leaving any q-tip fibers in there. If you notice dirt on the q-tip, then you'll probably see some improvement. You'll want to do this on the other door as well. If you're really in the mood, you can do all four doors. On the disc is a little metal bulge. It's called a wiper. The end of that wiper might have a little debris on it. Clean it with a q-tip, but be gentle. If you're done with all the cleaning, you can now start closing the doors, but first you'll have to put the disc back in. And what I like to do is hang it on the little hanger thing. Note the position of the dots. You'll want to make sure you don't have it upside down. If you get it positioned just right, you should be able to close the door and hear a snap. If it feels like it's not shutting, open it back up, take the disc back out, reposition it, and try again. Then reassemble your controller as described in method 6, and see if that helped. Method 8 involves trading the disc out for a new one, or a spare one that you have laying around. You can buy replacement parts off Amazon. More than likely, you have to buy the whole analog stick. So you can get a brand new analog stick and take the disc out of it and put it into your controller. To get inside your controller to do this, see methods 6 and 7. Method 9 is only for those who are good at soldering. I'm not going to show the entire process here, because I know most of you are uncomfortable doing it. But I do have some general advice. Each of the doors is held down by three pegs. If you desolder those three pegs, you can remove the whole door and replace it with a new one. It helps to lay the soldering iron across all three contacts and just pull it out. Just like in method 8, you'll probably have to buy a whole new analog stick just to get the doors. There's a chance that the new doors you have will not fit. So just be very careful when you make a purchase. If you're very skilled and you're feeling very ambitious, you can replace the whole analog stick altogether. There's 14 solder points holding the whole thing down, so it's quite a big operation. Plus, you have those two wires in the middle that you'll want to get out of the way. I've done this on DualShock 4 that has the same configuration for the most part, and it took quite a while, and I would only recommend it if you're highly skilled. 
So that's all I had today. If you'd like to hear an interesting story about how I got my PS5, see the video right in front of you. May your games make you happy and smart, and may people respect you for playing them. So long, everybody.